Today is a beautiful day because we're gonna bake loads of cookies. All of these are easy one bowl recipes and the cookies that result are soft and chewy, just the way I like them. As always, you can find the link to the blog post in the description box below for the full breakdown of the recipes and no more introduction needed. I'm sure you're ready to dive in, as am I, so let's get started. We'll start by making these peanut butter and chocolate oatmeal cookies, which take only 15 minutes to make from start to finish and use just seven ingredients with no added sugar, oil, or flour. For those who use metric measurements like grams and milliliters, please note I always include this in my blog post, so check the links in the description box below. Now this recipe calls for quick oats, but if like me you only have regular oats, you can always make your own by throwing them into a food processor and blend until coarsely chopped. Now you're just going to want to add the bananas to a large bowl and mash until you achieve a rather fluid consistency. Then you add the vanilla extract and peanut butter and mix it all together. At this point you can add the cranberries, roasted coconut flakes, chocolate and oats, stirring until it's all well combined. The mixture should create about 12 cookies, so you'll first roll it into a ball and then press it down to create a cookie shape. Place it on a cookie tray lined with baking paper and you don't need to leave so much room between the cookies because they won't spread. Bake it in the oven at 350 Fahrenheit or 180 Celsius for about 10 to 12 minutes or until the tops turn golden. Remove it from the oven and allow it to cool for a couple of minutes before you transfer it to a cooling rack to cool completely. In my opinion, these cookies can hardly be called dessert in the conventional sense in that they're just too wholesome and make for a wonderful snack that anyone will enjoy, kids or adults alike. This is just to show you how soft and chewy the cookies are and they taste so good you won't even believe that they're so healthy too. All right, moving on to cookie recipe number two, blueberry almond breakfast cookies. As the recipe name suggests, these cookies can make for a quick grab and go breakfast if you really can't find a time for a sit down meal, but I personally use it more as a snack or dessert. Like the previous recipe, these cookies are made with no added sugar, oil, or flour and feature some super wholesome ingredients including antioxidant rich blueberries, fiber and omega-3 powerhouses like flax and chia seeds, as well as applesauce and a banana, which not only add natural sweetness, but also function similarly to oil in baked treats. But of course, these fruits are much more nutritious than oil. Now we're going to create our own almond meal by grinding up the almonds in a food processor until it makes a coarse flour. Then we're going to chop some dairy-free dark chocolate and if you're not a fan of chocolate you can always substitute it out in any of these recipes for nuts, seeds or dried fruits of your choosing. We'll start again with the banana, mashing it completely before we add the applesauce, almond butter and vanilla extract, then stir to combine. Then you can add the almond meal, ground flax seeds, and chia seeds, stirring before you then add the baking soda, cinnamon, and salt. Then you'll add the oats and pumpkin seeds, stirring once again before you add the chocolate and blueberries at the very end. You're gonna wanna fold these in gently so that the blueberries don't bleed so much into the dough. Much like before, we're gonna roll this dough into a bowl and then press it into a cookie shape. This should make about 10 cookies in total. Always reserve a few chunks of chocolate to place on top as well for presentation before you bake it in the oven at 350 Fahrenheit or 180 Celsius for about 15 minutes or until it's lightly golden. Then allow it to cool for a couple minutes before you again transfer it to a cooling rack. These cookies are so delicious, it's really just a bonus that they're loaded with grains, seeds, nuts, and fruit. I especially like to enjoy it with some homemade chai tea and fresh fruit when my sweet tooth strikes, and I can say with all honesty, I now prefer these to the super sweet conventional store-bought cookies I used to eat before. I used to eat them because they were convenient, but these cookies can be too. I mean, I usually make a big batch and then individually wrap them and freeze them to enjoy as on-demand desserts or grab-and-go snacks. We're gonna move on to our final recipe now, classic chocolate chip cookies. Now the previous two recipes were super wholesome, but I'm not averse to having some more indulgent treats sometimes too. And this recipe makes for a wonderful housewarming or potluck contribution if you choose. I once took it to Robin's family's gathering and no one noticed they were vegan. No hidden or strange ingredients in this recipe. And here's a little tip. You'll want to use refined coconut oil instead of unrefined oil to avoid any pronounced coconut flavor in the cookies. The coconut oil really just functions similarly to butter in normal cookie recipes. Another tip is to reserve some of the chocolate bits for presentation on top of the cookies at the end. You'll notice I did this with every recipe in this video. Now to a large bowl, you'll want to cream together some solid coconut oil and brown sugar. If the coconut oil is liquid, just place it in the fridge for a bit to harden first. 
Once creamed, add the maple syrup, plant milk, vanilla extract, baking soda, salt, and baking powder, and mix it again until well combined. The mixture is going to look clumpy and that's okay. Now, if the temperature is warm where you are, you might wanna consider chilling this mixture in the fridge for 30 minutes to firm up. Otherwise, the cookies flatten and spread a little bit too much when it's baking in the oven. But if the temperature is cool in your working space, you can just omit this step. Then mix it together one more time before you add the flour and stir until it's just combined, but be careful not to over mix. Then you can add the chocolate chunks and gently fold it in. Now we're gonna form little balls out of the dough and evenly distribute them about five centimeters or two inches apart because the cookies will certainly spread when it's baking. Top it with the reserved chocolate chunks before you bake it in the oven at 350 Fahrenheit or 180 Celsius for 12 to 15 minutes or until it's lightly golden. The recipe is gonna make about 18 to 20 cookies all together. Enjoy it with coffee, tea, chai, or simply on its own. Sometimes a good old classic will hit the spot and it's always rewarding to know you made it yourself from plant-based ingredients. I'll again show you how the cookie comes apart when it's been cooled, the texture is soft, and the flavor is oh so indulgent. Now I'm curious to know, what's your favorite kind of cookie? Share it with me in the comment section just down below. Give me loads of ideas because I'm sure I'm gonna be making more video recipes like this one and I wanna veganize your favorite treats and desserts. And before you leave to make these delicious recipes, be sure that you tag me on Instagram because I wanna see your beautiful creations. All right, that's it for today. Pickup Limes signing off. We'll see you next week.